From downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A local woman trying to get her car back from a parking lot in Canada. Now the manager of that property says she can have it for a price. A new COVID vaccination program in Macomb County went so well today, it's raising the question, is this how it should be done everywhere? It's a simple idea, using smart buses to bring the shots to the people who need the most. In Macomb County putting into practice today, and what you're about to see could be a model for how to reach vulnerable people desperate for protection from the virus. Sean Lay shows us for some seniors this was a big win and an emotional moment. Our cameras were inside. We want to show you what we saw and what we felt. And the question is, why is this not happening everywhere? All right, you ready? Sharon Gurney is 78, and she just got her first COVID-19 vaccine dose. Oh, I was thrilled. I was, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was just so, th I thank God. She got it just by answering her phone when Macomb County and Smart Bus called her. They called us. Honestly, we were surprised and happy, surprised and happy at the same time. The state has been sending Macomb County fewer doses every week, just 4,700 this week. Seniors are not getting those life-saving doses. Jeff White is the chief here at Richmond Lenox Township EMS. Years ago, he started the program using smart buses to take seniors in his area to the doctor, even the grocery store in this part of Macomb County. He called smart and said if they could get the vaccine doses, they could get them to the seniors who use SMART. We contacted our, our partners at SMART and said, you know, is there a way that you folks could help? Well, they jumped in with both feet. Just I mean, a couple of days ago. Just a couple of days ago. The results? I thought I was going on a trip. Danny Ferguson did take a trip to 32 Mile Road to Richmond Lenox EMS and got his shot. Today, SMART picked up seniors from East Point, Bourne, and Chesterfield. It put a lot of weight off my shoulders. It just gives me a lot of hope, you know, seeing people actually get the doses. Macomb County is giving 1,000 doses a week to this effort that could be copied anywhere else as long as there are doses. You can cut through the frustration and get those shots into arm. Isn't that what we're all supposed to be working on? So comforting. It's, I mean, it, I wasn't afraid. Get this vaccine taken care of. Get the virus the heck out of our lives. And SMART wants you to know that you do have to have an appointment. You just can't show up. We'll keep an eye on this program. We'll let you know when it expands. In Richmond Township, Sean Light, Local 4. All right, Sean. And now to today's coronavirus headlines as the city of Detroit expands vaccine eligibility. Detroiters 60 and older with chronic medical conditions, including heart conditions, cancer, and asthma, can now get a vaccine at the TCF Center. At her briefing in Lansing, Governor Whitmer announced $53 million will be sent to nearly 6,000 small businesses. We'll have more from the governor in just a few moments. For today's coronavirus numbers, the state reports 939 new cases and 11 more deaths. One of the main topics of Governor Whitmer's briefing today was her $5.6 billion COVID recovery plan. The governor is again calling on Republican lawmakers to work with her to get it passed. I am grateful that the House and Senate Republicans have put out their two proposals for spending some of the federal dollars available to us, but it's time that we figuratively get in the room and negotiate the details and get it done. Because every day that goes by, that's $5 billion that could be infused into our economy and our efforts to protect people. The Republican proposals are for a lower amount than what the governor is asking for. The legislature is also asking for more oversight over the governor's spending. Mayor Duggan providing an update today on how the city of Detroit's plowing contractors fared after the snowstorm. So far, 85 percent of Detroit's city streets have been plowed. Contractors were given 24 hours to clear almost 2,000 miles of residential streets. Public Works and General Services Department will be joining in to assist with what's left to plow. But as a result, a portion of pay will be cut for contractors who did not hit that 24-hour goal. On paper, they have the right number of trucks and the right number of employees. Uh, but getting out in the middle of a snowstorm and executing is, is a challenging job. We had a number of contractors did extremely well. We had a couple that just could not keep up with the pace, and we're dealing with that now. The mayor went on to say, if you see a street that is yet to be plowed, contact the city. They will send a truck. They hope to completely have all the work done by tomorrow. Of course, 
in time for you know. <laughs> that's, that's right, of course. By tomorrow, there's <laughs> yeah. likely to be more snow on the ground yeah. to contend with. Uh, not nearly as much, though, this time, right, Ben? Yes, if we got through uh, the early snowstorm, you're going to get through this next one just fine. Maybe a little uh, inconvenient, but you'll get through it. And here's where it is right now. You can see it moving out of the Gulf, tapping into a lot of Gulf moisture, although the core of this storm is going to be further to the east. So just as potent of a system, uh, we're just not going to see as much of it as what we saw on Monday. So timing wise, there may be a couple flakes around very early tomorrow, but most of the accumulating snow is not going to be here until lunchtime and then beyond. We'll see a lot of it happen during the evening commute tomorrow. Probably the biggest impact should be fairly light to occasionally moderate snow and then it's out of here pretty early on Friday morning. Here's some good news. Uh, no negative numbers in the lows tonight. In fact, we'll start at 14 now that we have the help of clouds uh, insulating what little heat we did get today. Highs tomorrow at 26 and most of the second half of tomorrow will be snow filled. So coming up, we'll check on the warmer temperatures and another shot of snow for the weekend. You can get a sneak peek at it at the local forecasters app, 10 day forecast, current radar and so much more free in your app store by searching WDIV guys. And it's a story now making international news. A Metro Detroit woman in a battle to get her vehicle from an off site parking lot near the airport in Toronto. The pandemic hit just as she was traveling and crossing the border and getting the car back has since been impossible. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester joins us with an update to the story. And Hank, I understand the car has now been located. Yes, Kimberly, uh, we have the car. We've been able to track it down in the lot still. But here's the big issue that remains. Getting it to Detroit is not only complicated, it's incredibly costly. There it is, covered in snow, just sitting there in this once thriving off-site parking lot near the airport in Toronto. Kim Richardson's car hasn't moved from this lot since last March. While we were gone, the pandemic like hit full force and Canada wound up shutting its borders. Kim flew out of Toronto early last March pre pandemic shutdown. Her return flight was rerouted to Detroit Metro. Her car trapped since a Canadian TV crew heard about our report and is now on the story in Toronto. They spoke with the owner of the lot on the phone. I have to have expenses too, right? I got employees. I got this. I got that. Uh, you know, I have lighting. Uh, I have expenses. It's not like I'm, I don't operate for free. I mean, I've, I've lost uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, I mean, if they wanted to, I mean, they should have came and got the car right away. Management claims other Americans in similar situations had their cars shipped home. And he says he needs Kim's full payment, $2,800 for the lot fee, because he's struggling too. It's a ticking clock, right? I don't, I don't understand. Like, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, uh, uh, Business is, uh, is, is down. I'm, I'm not making any money at all. I'm losing my shirt and, I, and uh, people that leave their car, they're paying. She's the only one that hasn't paid. He also claims he only heard from Kim recently, but she says that's not true. She called many times and these emails show she did reach out in April and May of last year, but she would only receive a generic reply. And the crew that shot that video tells us they did see vehicles with other U.S. license plate in license plates rather still in that lot. I should tell you our neighbors in Windsor and the surrounding areas, they've been incredibly kind, sending me emails, offering to drive to Toronto to get the vehicle themselves. The issue, though, would be bringing it back here to Detroit, uh, not only having to pay that twenty eight hundred dollars, but then, of course, the shipping fee to get that car across the river. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, back to you. How nice of our Windsor friends, though, that are watching. Uh, Hank, before you go, I want to ask you, though, I, I, when people reach out to you for help, you're used to working alone to get a resolution, but this time you're collaborating with a Canadian counterpart. So just tell us a little bit what yeah. that's been like. And Kimberly, it's been incredibly helpful. You know, these Canadians, they are so nice, <laughs> uh, first of all. But it's great to have boots on the ground, a reporter who's there in Toronto mm -hmm. making contact with the people going to the lot physically. They are hopeful for a resolution. Uh, so we're doing whatever we can on our end here in Detroit to get that vehicle home to Kim. Yep, all Back right. To you. Keep us posted, Hank. We appreciate it. Uh, Ford continues its push into electric vehicles with a new investment in Europe. The automaker plans to convert its entire passenger car lineup on the continent to electric 
by 2030. Ford's going to spend a billion dollars to revamp its factory in Germany. The plant would be the base for production for battery-powered cars using Volkswagen's mechanical framework. The new electric car is to reach the market in mid-2023. That announcement comes just a month after GM announced its entire global line would be largely electric by 2035. Cannabis has become a multi-million dollar business, but there's still a double standard when it comes to social equity in the industry. Well, now a company here in Michigan is looking to address that. Local 4's Larry Spruill shows us how a company called Pleasantries is trying to level the playing field. The company Pleasantry is known for its cannabis products here in Michigan, but now they're also setting the standards in the industry on a whole different level. They're hiring more minorities. One of them is an attorney who is changing the face of the industry as a whole. Um, as far as we know, I'm the first uh, black in-house counsel of a Michigan cannabis manufacturer. It's something attorney Jerome Crawford with Pleasantries does not take lightly. He's over legal operations and social equity for the cannabis company Pleasantries. Social equity has basically become a term of art uh, in the cannabis industry. Crawford says his goal is to eliminate the historic cultural stigma surrounding the industry. Now the ACLU says black people are 3.73 more likely than white people to be arrested for marijuana. That's something Crawford is addressing. Kind of level the playing field, right? When you have this industry that has been can that's been criminalized by you know prohibition, prior prohibition that's now legal. So it's really trying to sort of balance those scales and even things out. That's why they are introducing the Pleasant Tree Social Equity Plan. They list four pillars access to value chain, education, being a good neighbor, and legislative. Supporting piece of legislation, supporting um, actually elected officials that are about the change, that want to do different things. Reporting in Royal Oak, Larry Spruill, Local 4. All right, Larry, online sports betting off to a big start in Michigan. Coming up, the amount of wagering and how much of that money is going to the state and to the city of Detroit. Plus, Dr. Frank McGeorge answers a new set of important questions about the COVID vaccines, including one about delays between a first and second dose.